Also a top story tonight, a state of shock, grief, and anger blanketing the nation and the world. That anger increasing by the day as more innocent civilians lose their lives in Israel. Yeah, President Joe Biden describing the attack as an act of sheer evil, confirming 14 Americans have been killed, while others are now being held hostage in Gaza. We must be crystal clear. We stand with Israel. We stand with Israel. We will make sure Israel has what it needs to take care of its citizens, defend itself, and respond to this attack. There's no justification for terrorism. There's no excuse. Israeli warplanes are pounding Gaza City, home to Hamas's center of government. This comes after Israel, Israel's prime minister vowed retaliation against the Islamic militant group. The death toll in this conflict has reached the highest number of fatalities in a single year since 2014. The latest violence causing more than 1,000 deaths in Israel and 900 in Gaza. Today, the Israel military activated 300,000 reservists from across the world in a massive mobilization. Yeah, many of those Israeli reservists have relocated here to Colorado, but still refer to Israel as their home. One of those families met with your reporter, Gabriella Vidal, today. And Gabby, this father passionate about returning to Israel to join the fight if needed. Yeah, Karen and Michael, and it's a passion shared by everyone in the family. They're feeling helpless being here in Denver, and while they're safe, they know that a lot of their family members are hunkered down back in Israel or getting ready to fight back. And while they haven't made any uh, rash decisions about whether or not they will return at some point, they say they're doing their part to help and fight back and help Israeli families. I, I was in shock. Like, I've, I, we've never experienced anything like this. Hagit and Arya Gibor say it's been gut-wrenching watching the war unfold in their home back in Israel. It's so hard to understand what happened over there. The couple and their three children moved from Jerusalem to Denver a year and a half ago. Israel has a lot of waves of violence. Waves of violence that became too much by the time Arya was drafted in 2008 during the Gaza war. I was alone with a little baby and had just lost my brother um, that year to a, in a terror attack. Going into the army wasn't any question. It was we all wanted to serve, we all wanted to go and protect our country. Our kids growing up when they were really tiny, like toddlers, it wasn't uncommon for us to run to the safe room, or actually we made the safe room their room um, when the sirens would go off. Now, safely watching the chaos unfold. It's a blessing and a curse to be here. Both can't help think about their family and friends seeking shelter. For Arya, it's not being there to help fight against Hamas. Yes. Yeah, if I did not have my family here right now, I would have gone. Arya was looking for his passport everywhere, and I got stressed out, and I said, are you really going to go? And he said, no, but I need my passport handy. He just said, if I make that decision, it will be a joint decision. Just click on them. But it's through her own experience feeling helpless during times of war in Israel. Hagit enlisted the help of a nonprofit organization in Jerusalem that teaches youth to code to create an app that connects volunteers in the Israeli region to families in need. This app actually lets volunteers put in their um, their details, where they live, what kind of help they can give, and they ping themselves on a map. Hagit, who's already gathered data of families who've had loved ones kidnapped, missing, or in battle through an online forum she's created, can then help connect volunteers who've signed up directly to them and provide aid, whether it be groceries, food, transportation, medical care, or other services. Hopefully, by tomorrow, we can already have a list of volunteers. And a way for this family to give as much as they can amidst the chaos. This is not just, you know, back and forth. This is terror. This is ISIS-like terror. And that family tells me that that app should already be working as we speak. And while they haven't made any decisions about whether or not they will return, they do say if the situation does get worse in Israel, they may consider that as an option. Kieran. Gabby, I love how they're already just stepping in, trying to help out all the families there. But one thing that keeps sticking with me are their kids. And you and I were talking in the newsroom a few minutes ago about how they're really having a tough time imagining what their friends are going through in Israel right now.
Yeah, and while these kids have experienced warlike situations in the past, Karen, it's tough for the family to say, then they tell me right now they're having to tell their kids that they're, some of their friends and loved ones are uh, having terrorists in their place and some of them even becoming hostages during this crisis right now. So terrible. All right, Gabby, thank you for introducing us to that family. Gaza, we know, is one of the world's most densely populated areas. More than 2 million people live in an area barely twice as big as Washington, D.C. Gaza controlled by Hamas, which the U.S. considers to be a terrorist organization. Not all Palestinians, though, voted for Hamas when they came into power back in 2007. Gaza was almost immediately blockaded by land, sea, and air by Israel and Egypt. Well, since then, it has fought four major wars with Israel. The group has always had one overriding goal, to wipe Israel off the map. Well, now Israel says it intends to do the same to Hamas.